Now let's see the next thing. That's the mono-substituted cyclohexane. Now what is mono-substituted cyclohexane? So in cyclohexane, if any one hydrogen is replaced by a substituent, then it becomes a mono-substituted cyclohexane. So obviously, that substituent decides the stability of conformation, whether it is present at axial position or equatorial position. So internal energy depends on that position, whether it is axial or equatorial, that decides the stability. So let's see the two examples of mono-substituted cyclohexane. First is methyl cyclohexane and second is tertiary butyl cyclohexane. Let's see the methyl cyclohexane first. So in methyl cyclohexane, if you see here, so it exists in two possible chair conformation. So in first, methyl group is at axial position. So this way I have shown it axial position. And other is that methyl group is present at the equatorial position. So these are the prefixes given here, A and E. So it's A for axial and E for equatorial. Now let's see in this two axial methyl cyclohexane and equatorial methyl cyclohexane which is most stable. So that can be checked or supported by the Newman projections. So here it is. So equatorial methyl cyclohexane is more stable than axial methyl cyclohexane. So let's see why. So first we will see the axial methyl cyclohexane case. So in axial methyl cyclohexane, if you see here, this is the Newman projection. So we are seeing from this side, so carbon number 2 and carbon number 4, these are the front carbons and carbon number 1 and carbon number 5 are the rear carbons. Okay. Now if you see this methyl group now creating 1,3 diaxial interactions here. So that's shown here clearly. The hydrogen is present at the carbon number 3 and carbon number 5. So with respect to this carbon, these two positions are at 3 number and therefore this is known as a 1,3 diaxial interaction. Another thing about this, if you see in this particular structure, so here is the butane gauche interaction present. Now what is the butane gauche interaction? So name itself suggests that there is a butane segment. So if you see this particular methyl carbon, so carbon number 1, then carbon number 2nd, 2, this becomes 3rd and this becomes 4. So as this carbon number 4 is to the upper side, so this is having some sort of interaction with this methyl group. Okay. So similarly, this carbon also having the same type of interaction with this axial methyl group. This is known as a butane gauche interaction. So if you have a 1 methyl group, so it creates 2 butane gauche interactions. Remember, it's very important thing. When you have a 1 axial methyl group, so it creates 2 butane gauche interaction. So for 1 butane gauche interaction, so the energy corresponds to that 1 butane gauche interaction is 0 0.9 kilocalories. So as two butane gauche interactions are present here, so for axial methyl cyclohexane, what is the total energy? 2 into 0 0.9, that's the 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. So this is about the axial methyl cyclohexane. Now let's see what happens when equatorial methyl cyclohexane is there. So see here, it is. so we are seeing from this side, so carbon number 2 and carbon number 4 are front carbons in the Newman projection and obviously carbon number 1 and 5 are the rear carbons. Now if you see here this methyl group, so this methyl group is anti to this bond. So it just looks like an anti-conformation or staggered conformation. So in this case there is no any butane wash interactions are present as anti-arrangement is present here. So, no any 1,3 diaxial interaction or butane gauche interactions present and therefore the energy of 
equatorial methyl cyclohexyl is minimum and it's considered to be zero kilocalorie per mole. And therefore, equatorial methyl cyclohexyl is more stable than a axial methyl cyclohexyl by 1.8 kilocalorie per mole because axial methyl cyclohexyl has energy 1.8 kilocalorie as compared to equatorial methyl cyclohexyl. So remember that that's the important thing. Let's go for the second example. That's the tertiary butyl cyclohexane. So this is the example of locking of conformation. Let's see what happens here. What is the locking of conformation? So if you have a heavily crowded or bulky groups like a tertiary butyl group present in the cyclohexane. So here it is. So this is the tertiary butyl cyclohexane shear form. So if that bulkier group present at the equatorial position, then there will be no interactions present. But when that group comes to axial position, so see it's a highly crowded, heavily crowded group, bulkier group creates a more or severe steric interaction as well as one thread axial interaction which increases the energy of molecule tremendously so highly unstable structure if it is a highly unstable structure it never form it never form so we can say that equatorially substituted tertiary butyl group is locked at the equatorial position so it will not go into the other chair form in which tertiary butyl group is at axial position because it's highly unstable. So this will never form. So tertiary butyl group is locked at the equatorial position and this phenomenon is known as a locking of conformation. Okay. So all of you are getting it. What is locking of conformation? So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, please subscribe the channel. Press the bell icon button so you'll get the notification of the next video and you can watch as early as possible. If you really like it, please share the video and comment in the comment section what type of the videos you want. So I'll make the video on that. Thank you very much.